Uh, the missing element is the ethics, the values. That's true. What I am very nervous about is how that gap gets filled. And I say why I'm nervous about that is because it's often filled by arrogant religion. And that's very dangerous. And so, although I recognize that that is missing in, in, in all, almost everything we do, it's the reason why the wealthier we are, the less we give. Uh, it's, it's the reason why we don't, we walk past someone who needs help and we don't help them. But I want to be careful about how we address that problem. And uh, I, don't know, I don't know what the answer is, but I do worry if we push from being a secular uh, world government, a secular uh, national government, we push away from that, then it's whose set of values and whose religion is in control. And once that's determined, then it becomes, uh, it becomes a competition and it becomes very uh, dangerous, I think. Uh, and so the concept of uh, equality doesn't have the same meaning if a, a religious group is in control. Dr. Phillips. Okay. No, I think Barrister. No, I think Connie clearly has made a, raised a very, very pertinent and very important point. Um, we're yet to determine the place of religion in public life. Um, unfortunately, <coughs> The voices we hear uh, the most, who speak the loudest, are those on either end of the spectrum, the extremists, the extreme pro proponents um, who would have us follow one path and impose it, unfortunately, through violent means, and those at the other end who would ditch the whole thing altogether, who see no place for faith-based values in society both ends of, the, of that spectrum, um, both those points of view, both those attitudes, don't promote sustainable, peaceful society. And we need to recognize that. We also need to recognize that there is the entire body of humanity's religious experience to draw on. And one of the things that I understand the Baha'i Chair has been doing here has been promoting that understanding of the spiritual heritage of mankind, that entire body of values, of uh, insight into human nature, into what truly motivates uh, uh, the human being, uh, gives shape and, and fullness to, to human life. Those values are there, those principles are there to be drawn on and to be examined and to be applied. And I think that the question of religion can't be divorced from it's coupling with science that the principle that they of the harmony between science and religion this interplay between these two great sources of knowledge needs to be better i think understood and appreciated in society that yes religion is not just about it isn't to my understanding about um state about esoteric uh elucidations statements of the exotic it's actually about statements about reality of who we are, aspirational uh, statements and the way we ought to be. And we should be rigorous and we should be scientific and we should be practical. And we should look at how we can apply these to our individual lives and the life of society and actually go back and learn from that experience and evaluate that experience. Do these things actually work? And I think use a methodology of science to demonstrate the eternal validity of these very important and very powerful and transformative spiritual principles and values. I think then we have a way out of this uh, scenario, which is um, not entirely helpful because there isn't common agreement and common consensus on how we move forward, and we clearly do need to move forward.